Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Daily Scan for June 1st, 2015. Well, today is Monday, and I know that uh, many of you probably heard about the GDP numbers for last Friday. Um, it was not pretty. It wasn't expected to be pretty, and it wasn't. The market reacted appropriately. We'll take a look at that. Uh, in just a minute but for today on the announcement front that may be market affecting we have personal income and outlays PMI manufacturing index ISM manufacturing index construction spending and that looks like that's pretty much it for the colored ones for today rest of the week looks pretty busy and then into the uh, unemployment numbers for May coming out on Friday. What else we got here? Um, yeah, okay, just the usual stuff. I don't see um, any um, Fed meeting minutes or anything like that coming out this week. So, uh, although these are said to be market affecting, um, they're just another cog in the, in the wheel of pointing the the market in whatever direction it feels like it wants to go based on its confidence or not so much that maybe these days maybe it's based on how much money there is to put into the market uh, it's the short story here I was listening to this guy I, I can't remember what his name is but he's on Sunday afternoons and he's really he's a um, financial guy but he's really a marketing guru is what he is and uh, uh, not a option guru and we all know our neighborhood option guru uh, but he's, he's uh, more marketing than he is anything really sensible but uh, he said basically that it's all the money that's out there right now that's pushing the market up but uh, one thing that he noted is that in 2008, a lot of people pulled their money out of the market and they want cash. That's what he said. I don't know if that's true or not. And, of course, since 2008, the market's done nothing but move up. So that, if you pulled your cash out in 2008, or pulled your money out of the market in 2008 and went cash, that was probably a pretty big mistake. Okay, um, I got the one other thing I wanted to talk about, provided I remember to talk about it. So I don't want to talk about it yet. Okay, um, let's take a look across the ponds in Asia, mostly uh, bullish, and in Europe, mostly bearish. So I wonder what's going to happen here. Well, let's take a look. We haven't decided yet. Uh, we're just kind of like blah, blah, blah. Uh, gold, 1186. Yeah, quite a bit short of our magical 1200 number. We like to see it up around 1200 or maybe a little bit better. But we'll wait. Uh, oil, and wait a minute. We got, where is it down here? Here it is. That's a July call, so we got a lot of time on that one. Um, well, at 59.56, that's not really going anywhere. Just kind of like it, it is definitely range bound. Let's take a look here. Uh, yes, yeah, it's been pretty range bound the last well month, basically. Uh, the dollar ninety seven forty three that also has been pretty range bound. Well, maybe not so much, but look like it's always going to make a comeback. It still might. I don't know whether they said that it was going to the euro was going to reach parity this summer, which means a one for one, and it's not heading that in that direction right now. That's for sure. It's trying to. The dollar's got to get a little bit stronger. It probably needs to be up around 102 or so in order to get that parity. So that's where we're at here is a dollar nine eighteen, which is up 
uh, quite a bit from what it was uh, recently. Okay, uh, let's go back take a look at the account. Um, so I wanted to get out of rut on Friday and then it headed south and it was uh, working against it so I just stayed out of it. Uh, look at the big chart. And it's SPX. Let's take a look at rut. A slow typer today. Yeah, that little move on Friday. We take a look at the daily. Uh, kept me from closing it. If it would have stayed up here, I would have closed it. But it didn't work out. Let's take a look at SPX. And we're still uh, staying in our triangle range here, uh, even on the daily. If we go back and take a look at the weekly, this is what it looked like on Friday. Big red candle. That's okay, though. I think that we can absorb that. And if we were to take a look at our velocity line here, uh, this iron condor expires next week. Uh, so that's this one, this range here. Should end up pretty good shape with that. And then we have next week is this 10 delta. And then the week after that we have another iron. One that we condorized last week, if you remember right. So that's where we are with SPX. Then we also have a SPXPM. And that's the one that... that uh, um, this one right here is the regular June. So if we look at this, we have um, June 4. Oh, not in this one account. Overall, though, we have... Yeah, there we go. Now we get the full picture. We have June 2. This is effectively June 3. And this is June 4. Now, I can't do any more in this account. And the way that I figure that out is to go over to the account statement and I look here. Net liquidation value, which isn't showing up here. And then option buying power. Those are the two numbers that I look at. If you have a um, uh, an option, an, an account for buying options, chances are you have... Oh, man, I'm just uh, missing the word right now. You have leverage, and they give you some extra money that you can borrow to buy more stock, usually double your account. So um, we don't want to uh, count that money, so we look at the net liquidation value and the option buying power. We don't want to go more than 10 or 20% of the net liquidation value. So we want this number to be 80% of your total account. We don't want to risk the whole account basically so that's what we look at yeah I'm having um, several brain uh, farts this morning so if I say something or do something crazy you'll know why all right uh, so no more trading in this account until we get some to expire which means no more trading this week or next week but there's plenty in this account here because this is the fat one. So we'll, uh, we'll might be doing some more in this one this week. Uh, we'll be looking to get out of rut today as well if uh, things move up. Uh, let's just for fun, let's go to the analyze tab and take a look at this just in this one account. Okay. Risk profile. Ta -da. Okay. Um, it's a, a... Yeah, we could just move this whole thing over. It won't let us. Um, there. there we go. Now we get a better picture. Here is the current price, I believe. Yeah, that should be it. 12.46. Okay, so we're up $56 in this. Uh, I have a target of uh, more than that. So we're at 140 I'm just looking to get like 70 or 80% out of this. 
So I am going to make a target. So hang on, I'm going to do this uh, calculation here. Okay, so here's the way that I did it. Oops, over here. Let me get this back. <laughs> I get a little wackle sometimes in the morning. All right, get the right. There we go. All right, now uh, here's the trade right here. I collected 47 cents. If I can, uh, if I can, I just take point two times. 40.47 that equals nine cents so uh, if I can sell this for nine cents I will so I just go here I uh, right click here right click and hold down a shift key here and then no that's not I'm sorry let me start over <laughs> left click shift left click right click create closing order and I, I'm gonna say 10 cents and let's confirm and send that and the chances of that happening are pretty dang slim I'm just gonna do this one account which one am I in? in this one? three there, I know there's positions across here, and, and there might be three in each, and I'm not sure, but I'm just going to do, I just do this as a single account. That makes it a lot simpler. Because then if I need to modify the order, I haven't figured out how to modify uh, a multiple account order. It, it pretty much doesn't let you do it. So I'm going to do these as individual in case I want to modify this in any way, shape, or form. So that is, uh, make sure this is what I want to do here. It says buy three blah 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 for 10 cents. And I'll send that. And that's going to cost me, uh, let's see, uh, $2.55, $15 in transaction costs. It's not cheap. So that's what I'm going to do across all the accounts. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, it's telling me here that the stock uh, probably needs to be, let me move this around here, uh, probably needs to be right now around 1268. So I'm just going to keep that in mind, that rut needs to be around 1268 in order to uh, have that order execute. Uh, let's see here. Reset slices. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do that on the other orders. I could do that here. I don't. I have that in this account. Yes, I do. So left click, shift left click, right click, create closing order. Uh, Ten cents. confirm and send and the last but not least I think it's down here in the boys account yes it is right click shift right click left click create closing order 10 cents confirm and send okay we're all set now if we went to a chart Probably, probably, blah, 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 probably would see that. Yes, it's way up here, but that doesn't really mean that the stock or the underlying or rut has to get up to there. That's just, you know, um, IV will decrease as the price moves up. And, you, you know, um, uh, the, it is set to expire next week, I believe. Yeah, so we have plenty of time for that. Ooh, you know what I need to do? I forgot to do that. Shame on me. I want to go back over here. Uh, I need to correct these orders. Let's go to all accounts. Take a look at the orders. I need to make these. See, that's why I want to uh, 
do this is I want to make them good tail cancel. Okay, I have to do that on all of them. I won't do I won't bore you here. And there you can see they're all good to cancel now. Okay, good till canceled. Blah, blah, blah. All right, let's run through our scan today right quick here. All right, Apple. Eh, still not really doing anything. Not too interested in that. Amazon still not doing anything, even on the weekly. It's just so many of these have flatlined. And you know what? That generally means that there's going to be uh, some possible change in market direction or just direction period. Baidu still is sliding down. Still wouldn't do a 50 delta on it. Not enough momentum there. Chipotle, uh, yeah, this would have been a good day to do a 50 delta. You would really kind of want it to get up in, in this area here to do that. It's just not, it's, you need a couple of days of a you know, a uh, temporary re reversal of direction, in this case, down. You didn't really get it here because you needed this couple days and then a couple days and then or a couple days up, or I mean, uh, heading up, a couple days back and up, back, and more of a sawtooth pattern, rather than, I don't know, this looks like a mud slinging contest or something. I don't know what this is here. I have no idea. Costco. Same thing. Uh, lots, you know, not fairly good movement. Um, a buck or two a day for the most part, but just nothing there. It's just nothing there. Here's the Dow. Um, the Dow is uh, definitely heading down. I would have to say this is. Um, Yes, this is our wedgie here. I mean our wedge. <laughs> it did pop above, didn't hold, came back down, and now it's testing the uh, trend on the bottom here, the support level. So, whew, geez, that makes me a little bit nervous. Gold is uh, not doing anything. Google? Google's not doing anything. LinkedIn? <laughs> Totally flatlined. The NDX uh, still uh, heading up, pretty much, which is uh, kind of a surprise, I guess. It supports net. I mean, supports uh, SPX because there's some big hitters there that are drifting upwards. And here's one of them, Netflix. I'm not sure if they're in the S&P 500. I would imagine they probably are. But they uh, had their nice move up from earnings here. I think it was earnings. I don't, I don't see it here. I don't know what this was. Oh, there was earnings back there. Uh, big jump. I think this was the China thing. And they're struggling to um, take off like a rocket as well. Priceline has definitely rolled over. And it has a very long way to go. I mean, look at this 1180. If it's down here... Um, it's 180 away from this low back in, when was that, February. 180. We already looked at RUT and SPX, and Tesla is last in, I don't know, not least, I guess, I don't know. It's it's drifting upward. <laughs> the argument I heard on the radio about uh, that other subject, I'm not going to get to it today because we're already at 19 minutes. Um, the other um, subject, or the other thing I heard on the radio was about how um, so many people think that Tesla is a totally clean car without thinking about where the electricity comes from for it. Of course, out in California, it's probably hydropower, um, but anywhere else it could be coal, it could be nuclear, uh, it could be wind, you know. And nobody really thinks about how much industrial waste is there in the, in the creation of the batteries and the steel or, you know, whatever the car is made out of. You know, how much industrial waste. So there is no really no such thing as clean 
transportation because in order to get there you leave a trail of crap and that's just the way that it is that's the way nature operates and nature itself takes care of its own by having you know things that clean up that crap but when humans build things and change chemistry like that then there's nothing left to clean it up and so what do we do we bury it we really don't have any choice but you know that's the way that it is we all like our iPhones don't we we all like our conditioning I certainly did last week when it was pretty warm uh, I should get off of my uh, get off my pedestal here and uh, wrap this thing up okay thanks a heap for watching I love this relaxed trading I get so much free time during the day I hope you guys do too uh, if you're still doing the 50 Delta trading um, I'd like to know if you're doing well or not <laughs> so have a great day and thanks for watching